Nicole Dune on the line as well. Got a couple of featured subject matter experts that we'll introduce shortly. Want to uh, give another moment or two for people to sign in, being the top of the hour right at the moment. Um, looks like there's two more people signing in now. So we'll give it another moment or two, and then we'll get back and start up the meeting momentarily. All right, looks good. Okay, team, let's get rolling. There's a lot to cover today and uh, very exciting topics. So, again, partner webinar series number three. Sean Browning here heading up partner enablement. Nicole Dune heading up the marketing. What I want to do is bring in a couple subject matter experts to talk about mobile and tracking across all of the different touch points. But first, a little bit of housekeeping. You know, so this is an interactive session. Uh, we want to leverage the Q&A panel for questions. So please feel free to type in your questions and then we'll be monitoring that and we'll, we'll cover those either during the presentation or towards the end. We're recording this so that way we can put this online. You can pass this along to your friends or anybody who wasn't able to attend. So there will be a recording that's available probably in a week or so, just like we've done for weeks one and two. This is more of a, a technical type of a topic. And so this is, you know, geared for business and technical people, especially those that understand the challenges of mobile, being able to advertise and interact with audiences and groups of people through a mobile means. And so, you know, when we're relating to a particular mobile topic like this, there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of understanding. And, and sometimes it's not necessarily for just general marketers. This is going to be for people that know what the challenges are for mobile specifically. So what we want to do is understand a little bit more about the coding capabilities of tracking mobile apps, right? And there's a difference between mobile apps and mobile webs. We'll go through that. Um, there's some configuration details that we'll cover, um, scalability, great multi-platform support, but I'll leave that to the experts that we'll bring on shortly. And so we'll move on and I'll introduce our subject matter experts. So where we have myself and Nicole running the webinar series, we like to bring in you know, very knowledgeable people in the, in the space. And so Jason Koo, I would like to introduce here. And Jason Koo is our lead iOS developer. Extraordinaire, I added in there. He's the guy that turns great ideas in, uh, you know, great ideas and products. Very creative, very collaborative. He's the guy I go to with any of my mobile questions. A um, little bit about him is he, I guess, taught English in Japan, I think you told me one time, Jason. Is that right? Correct. Fantastic. You've got uh, a wide array of skills. I'm really happy to have you on this call. Thank you very much for attending. Well, thank you. And, and also brought on Neil George. Neil is in charge of our mobile strategy. Which direction is Telium's going? Why are we doing this? I also wanted to bring Neil in on the picture because he gives us, you know, he fills in the picture of understanding of where are we going with this? Why are we doing certain things? Um, but then Neil's also turning into a great subject matter expert creating blogs about understanding the, the first screen detail. Again, we'll go into these details, but you know, some of his varied background, he's climbed some of the tallest peaks in South America. Neil, what were some of those, what were some of those peaks that you've climbed? Uh, I've climbed Chimborazo, which is the highest peak uh, in Ecuador in the Cordillera del Fuego, and about eight of the top 13 in that, in that area. So uh, yeah, a lot of fun. 
wild man. Again, another person with uh, some varied experience and background. Thanks for being on the call as well, Neil. You got it. So, Neil, would you would you take us through some of the detail of where where is mobile going? What are we doing? Where you know, if we're kind of taking a line from Wayne Gretzky, where are we going to be? Where's the hockey puck going to be? Where how do we skate to the hockey puck? What's what's the idea behind the mobile detail and where is the market going? Yeah, no problem. Uh, I, I'd like to to just first put out there uh, to to feel free, Sean, to to stop me at any point if you think there's questions that the audience might have, Nicole as well. Uh, we'll try to make this as, as interactive as possible. I want to make sure you guys get a, a sense of why we're so excited about mobile. And there's a lot of things going on. Some of this might be redundant for you folks since mobile is such a topical uh, uh, theme out there. And the growth of mobile is something that's staggering in digital marketing. So uh, some of these statistics, again, may be repetitive. But again, I want to paint a picture of what we're excited about. And then to your point, Sean, what are we aiming towards? What's our point of view? And what's our vision? So, you know, I like to start with, with maybe the only statistic that's actually uh, down to the right versus up to the right, which everything with regards to mobile is always up to the right. But this is the idea of the end of the unconnected. And Andres, Andreessen and Horowitz uh, recently uh, did a great webinar on the, on the subject. And the idea is that, you know, across the globe, the end of the unconnected is happening. That means that you know, really 80% of the, the population is going to be connected. And even if you're in a rural Ghana and don't have uh, access to running water, or clean running water, and even electricity in some cases, you might still have a place to plug in and get your cell phone uh, charged up and uh, a supercomputer in your hands. And it's, it's a really incredible thing to think about. Um, and again, 80% of the adult population will have smartphones by 2020. And uh, another really interesting statistic is that uh, our attention span is going away completely, uh, or so it seems, as we uh, surf through devices 21 times per hour, switching from our phones, our laptops, etc. So this idea that really we're becoming uh, visitors of the web, not just visiting the web, but actually engaging with applications uh, on multiple devices and, and really engaging with the web in different ways. And monthly usage of in-apps uh, or in-app monthly usage usage, I should say, is extraordinary. and It's a lot higher than people think. So media consumption in general, um, both video and content, in-app is going up significantly. And if you see some of the statistics that we have here from Nielsen, men are, are spending uh, just a bit more time um, in apps. But it, it, it just really seems like these, these uh, statistics are staggering and continuing to grow. And so is Illumiscape. So, Folks like myself that have been in digital marketing now for 18, 19 years, we've, we've watched how the Lumiscape has, has grown uh, to such a, 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 an incredible uh, amount of, of, of vendors. And, and hence, Telium uh, came out with a, a, a digital marketing platform, a tag management system to address the growth in the digital marketing space. Well, the Lumiscape in mobile, both for marketers and consumers, is just be, is, is extraordinary. And it's growing exponentially faster than the traditional digital, digital marketing Lumiscape for web. Advertising also is growing uh, very, very quickly. And advertisers and publishers are looking for ways to monetize the mobile space. And again, that ecosystem continues to grow. So we need ways to address that and pay attention to that growth. If you look at digital spend, um, as, as, as now mobile is starting to take the lead, for the first time, mobile has now surpassed newspaper and magazine and radio advertising, and it's catching up to traditional digital. Uh, TV and digital still being or taking the lion's share of that of that spend, but mobile is catching up. And if you look at non-mobile advertising, it's it's essentially staying pretty flat, whereas mobile is now on the rise and and could surpass very quickly based on all of the traffic moving towards mobile web versus traditional web. So all of these factors are, are getting us excited. They're forcing Telium to have a very specific point of view and to make sure that as we become the real-time customer data platform for folks on the web, as that traffic starts to move over to mobile, what is our solution? How do we help to solve for that? What is our operating system, uh, so to speak, for these different vendors that are on the uh, mobile applications themselves? The other thing that we pay attention to, and this may be uh, very interesting to you guys as well, since we have so many common customers and prospects, is that across the divisions of our organization, 
72% of the people that we're talking to have a mobile app in the marketplace. That means that every 1.2 to 1.5 uh, out of two conversations uh, have mobile as a, uh, as a very important part of their strategy. Now, whether we're talking about that with our customers or not today is something we need to ask ourselves. But again, in, in most of our uh, business units, we're talking to key customers that have some sort of uh, play, some sort of app. Some, some of it may just be for brochureware. Others are actually selling product and, and have very engaging applications. Folks like the Reader's Digest or Penguin Publishing, NBC, for instance. But even uh, uh, energy companies like TXU in Texas have ways for you to monitor your, your energy consumption. And again, these are just general statistics for you to think. Are my prospects, are my customers, are they thinking about mobile? Well, likely that they are and actually making plays today to make sure to solve for these use cases. Hey, Neil. So, yeah. Quick question on that last slide, though. The, is, is there a breakout there? Do we have a good understanding of app usage versus mobile mobile web? I mean, is there, you know, is there, every one of these here in these particular regions, is this measurement having to do with apps specifically? Because financial services, they'll have apps, and utilities, yeah. everybody with accounts, they have apps. So what's your thought there? No, it's a great question. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah, no, based on the research that I did both last quarter and this quarter, yeah. last quarter of the, of the accounts that we closed, over 50 new logos, over 100 deals that Tealing did, um, we had 62% uh, penetration. What I mean by that is that 62% of the companies that we worked with had an app in the marketplace. Cool. So when looking at this slide, what I mean here is across the divisions of our company, both the SMB, so the small smaller deals that we're closing and the larger enterprise deals, 72% of those conversations are with, with companies that have an app in the marketplace. Got it. And now, and it may just be the, one app, yeah. that, and it might just be for you know, kind of brochureware, for branding, or it could yeah. be someone like Singapore Press Holdings that has over 40 apps in the marketplace. Good point. Okay. Good, good information. Yeah, Thanks, very much about apps and not just mobile web. Uh, we, can, we can think of mobile web as syn synonymous to desktop. Um, if, if folks aren't addressing that, well, as we know, Google is probably punishing them and their SEO ratings are going down <laughs> uh, for not having mobile-friendly websites. So, yeah, that's a very sure. good thought. You know, app uh, usage, app strategy, uh, app consumption, both for the companies that build the apps and the consumers who, who consume that content going up. And hence, we came up with our mobile charter, and this is really what I'm in charge of, is, is looking for ways to, to better work, not just with my internal constituents, but also with our partners. How do we differentiate our message? Uh, how do we establish thought leadership in the conversations that we're having? As we're looking to solve for, 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 for different use cases in the digital marketing ecosystem, we want to be able to, to, to address mobile with a strong offering, with a, a visionary forward-looking perspective as to how, how, do, how do you address unified marketing? How do you create this 360 uh, visitor profile uh, across all channels with digital, or sorry, with mobile being so important? And ultimately, how do we establish a long-term partnership uh, with those customers that we're mutually addressing, uh, both the partners on the phone today and Telium, we're out there trying to establish long-term partners partnerships, and if we know that so much traffic, so much consumption is coming from the mobile space, we need to be able to solve for, for that, and we should get ahead of those uh, conversations. We should, have, we should be having them head on versus, you know, hoping to, to come up with something down the road. And that's really what my uh, charter is all about, and I've talked to Sean, early, you know, multiple times, and if you guys uh, out there on the phone want me in your conversations, just reach out to Sean uh, and team, and certainly I'm happy. have partners on the line it's you know mobile is hard mobile is complicated it's difficult and also it can be very expensive especially you know, I was talking to somebody who's building an app and once they looked at the cost there was about hundred and fifteen to hundred and fifty thousand dollars all in to create an app and so if our partners are in on conversations but they need a little bit of assistance it's nice to know Neil that you're able to to be you know you're available to, to help out with any partners in mobile conversations especially as far as T Liam's able to support that um, you know, for the mobile interaction across all of the different channels. So, thank you, Neil. That's very nice. Absolutely. 
So let's get into some of the more specific detail around what Telium uh, addresses, how we're solving for it through our solutions. And first and foremost, we need to talk about the two faces of mobile, right? So this is maybe elementary for a lot of folks, but we've got the traditional mobile web and then we've got mobile apps. Um, when you think of Telium for mobile web, uh, we work with responsive and M sites uh, just like we do with, with the desktop. Essentially, think of it as a one-to-one -one type uh, situation. Uh, all of our tag management capabilities address mobile web synonymously. Now with mobile apps, we get into a completely different world. And these native operating systems and cost development tools that exist out there uh, make the, the concept of a page essentially go away. And ways to hook into that native functionality, um, it's just a different paradigm. And we'll get more into the specifics, but we need to solve for those things differently than we do the traditional web. Telium has looked for ways to really support mobile standards in a very open uh, and transparent way. And we're the only vendor out there that, that really wants to be all things to all people from the, from the sense that we want to work with all four operating systems, even BlackBerry begrudgingly, uh, for some folks that still want to uh -huh. use that platform. But we really believe in that kind of, hey, let's, let's help our customers solve the problems that they have. And, you know, if you're the NHL, BlackBerry is very relevant. So how do we solve for that? We also want to work with cross-development tools. So some folks are leveraging uh, platforms like Unity, especially game developers, to uh, be able to write their native app once and have it be able to uh, be relevant to all four of the operating systems in the marketplace or the primary operating systems in the marketplace. So how do we uh, support that and have plugins for those particular platforms? Today, when it comes to the vendors themselves out there, a lot of folks are really just trying to solve for basic app tracking. They put it, uh, they're, they're, they're uh, still um, haven't really gotten into sophisticated functionality in their mobile apps. They have a mobile app in the marketplace, and they really just want to solve for central uh, uh, data governance across all of their digital touch points. They want to just do basic app tracking. So we've gone ahead and we've pre-integrated a number of the popular web analytics and mobile analytics vendors into our mobile library. But we're going to be looking to solve for other use cases. And as people mature their offering, they're going to want to do things like push notification or maybe beacon uh, communication, or maybe they'll want to do A-B testing with folks like Optimizely. So we'll be growing our, our, our pre-integrated capabilities in our mobile libraries. But today, this is essentially what uh, we're going to market with. Any questions there? Okay. Emil, I got a question. Let me just open this up real quick. And this might involve Jason a little bit. Because we have these cross-development tools. I, I got to visit Freightliner, you know, the manufacturer of uh, uh, big trucks, long-haul trucks. And they were looking at cross-development tools because they didn't want to design for one particular platform and then have to repeat that. So it's good that we have these cross-development tools. Hey, Jason, do you know, did we, are we working with PhoneGap and Accelerator and Titanium and Unity? Um, at customer requests, or were, did we take that on to move that direction because we thought that's the right move and the right way to go? What were your thoughts there, Jason? Uh, we we actually started creating them uh, well in advance because we thought we would be encountering clients that would need that in the future. So we built them early on, and then uh, pretty much shortly after, we had clients actually asking for them and, and employing them. Very cool. Yeah, it's always good to be prepared, right? And so, so I, I was just curious about that. I was. <laughs> not, not a question I really had prepared or anything, so I'm calling you out on the spot there, but I was curious about that part. So, But it's, it's good to know what we've got on the back. I think, it, especially when we look at the mobile vendors themselves that we want to support, you know, we've got a lot of great detail based on over 800 pre-integrated uh, vendors in our tag management uh, marketplace as to what vendors are very popular out in the ecosystem. And when it comes to mobile, it changes a bit, of course, but we're we're really looking at popularity, and we're also uh, trying to balance popularity with what our customers are asking for specifically in immediate use cases that we're trying to solve for. So we, we balance the, the overall development of our mobile library on, on, on those two types of, uh, of, of that, on that pendulum, so to speak. Cool. So thinking about our, our mobile library, we believe we've got uh, well, uh, the most comp uh, comprehensive mobile library in the marketplace. And what that means is, first, it's easy to integrate. It's essentially one line of, uh, of tracking uh, or one line of integration to allow you things like auto tracking, uh, things that people are looking for out there and looking to solve for. And we don't need to get into great detail here, here unless there's questions, but you know, flexible batching for offline activities. So if an app goes offline and there's 
a lot of activity during that time uh, during that time period. How does Teeling capture that so that eventually that data gets to its uh, reporting uh, bucket there? Uh, being able to, to capture both user-initiated information, programmatic events. So user-initiated is probably pretty straightforward, but programmatic means maybe if you're in like a gaming app and you now get to the third or fourth level and you get the golden ticket, uh, you know, being able to have that, those, being able to track that change within the app uh, as you move in or, or, uh, through different merits or, or levels within an app, being able to track that as well is really important for folks. Uh, being able to do things like debugging and auditing, having tools uh, that you can easily see what data you're passing to where, what data exists on a, on a particular a particular screen is important to folks. And again, as I mentioned, really wide support for the native OSs and cross development tools. And then here I've asterisked this 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 last point, which is the ability to integrate with any third party. Um, we don't today integrate with every third party, but the the methodology that we use and over time, you know, again, based on customer demand and popularity, the use cases we're trying to solve, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, we have the capability to really uh, advance the library to integrate uh, really anyone out there. But, you know, again, I, I just don't want partners to think that we go out and integrate with everyone today. We can supply you with a list of the folks that we do integrate out of the box with today, but then, again, I'll talk about who we're looking to solve for in the future. All right. So the idea here is, and it's very similar to tag management, we want to create a parallel universe where we see people wanting to solve for particular functionality out uh, in the mobile space for mobile apps. What is some of that functionality? Well, we talked about how Telium could help you manage centrally and remotely uh, configure your analytics for the mobile app, which uh, provides value in and of itself. But then as folks want to use other vendors for maybe push notification or A-B testing, maybe video, uh, very uh, specific video tracking vendors, they're going to want to add potentially third-party SDKs, and you start to get into the SDK crunch, where you add more and more SDKs and the performance uh, potentially of your mobile app uh, degrades. So being able to replace those SDKs with a universal mobile library that can handle the, the configuration of that functionality, of those vendors, but in a much more performance-oriented way is really what we're trying to do. And it's very similar to what we're solving for on the traditional web with our universal tag to help uh, increase performance and make the operational scalability of adding uh, a large vendor stack in, in the mobile web. Same type of thing for mobile apps. So that's really what we're, we're looking to solve for. And those use cases, as I mentioned, that we're hearing and looking to, to, to potentially integrate towards are things like A-B testing, or things like maybe personalization through con content modal pop-ups that might come up based on certain behavior. It might be uh, advanced video tracking. It might be uh, beacon integration or push notifications. So you do this particular activity, you may get a push notification, or maybe if you're close to a beacon, such as our, at our digital velocity events, and you have your, our digital velocity app on your phone, and you're, you're at our user conference, uh, if you're at the bar, you might get a notification or, you know, a, a note saying here's a free drink or something like that. And there's a, there's a lot of different ways to, to, to capture that. And that's what we want to solve for out there. And as I mentioned, we don't have all of those integrations pre-built out, but we're looking to solve for those based on customer demand and based on popularity of the use cases as we uh, hear them from our customers. Hey, Neil. Yeah. On that last point also, as a major takeaway for our partners on the line here, you know, you, you mentioned... SDK crunch and libraries, right? So um, as, as there's multiple SDKs, that SDK crunch, that's a kind of a new thought to me, right? Because a year ago we used to talk about, oh, SDK is the way to do it, build into the app, and that way you're in SDK. But if everybody's got an SDK, then I can understand an SDK crunch. So I think all our partners would benefit from the knowledge that there's such thing as a, an SDK crunch. And so that library principle, um, you know, we've learned a lot in the last year, two years, moving this direction. So I, I think that's a major takeaway for our partners to understand there's the library idea because there is such thing as an SDK crunch. So thanks for pointing that out. I wanted to make sure that was, it was, uh, you know, brought the awareness to our partners so that way they're more knowledgeable in conversations like that. That's smart. Okay. Thanks. Great. So I won't touch uh, too too long here on this notion of visitor stitching because Sean, I think you did a, a nice webinar on this subject already 
but it's important to think about because it's another thing that we solve for um, with our overall solution, uh, particularly our audience stream platform. But this idea is that you know we really want to look at the culmination of activities um, across devices. And if you're doing something like loyalty scoring, and, and I used three devices to engage with your brand today and ultimately made a purchase, was that one visit, three visitors? How many, you know, what, we want to be able to make sure that people can stitch this together effectively and calculate the overall, overall lifetime value of that entire session, even if it transpired over three devices. And so that's the idea uh, behind visitor stitching, and we can solve for that. We've got a patent on that. And again, when it comes to mobile, it's really important for us to think that about are you engaging with the brand on the mobile web? Are you engaging with the brand on mobile app, traditional web, and multiple devices? And then Telium, can you help me make sense of all of those engagements? And that's really what we're looking to solve for there. And on, if I could expand on that point a little bit more, and it's you know ties into this and the next slide, you know, like we we talked about some in our uh, summer webinar series one, we showed some of the device stitching across different devices, right? So Telium is that group that that we are doing that analysis, we're doing that active stitching, so latching on to a particular identifier of who a person is, we can understand them across devices, which as partners, when you're providing insight and understanding and analysis to your customers, and it has everything to do with accuracy, so they trust you, um, and the attribution, what Neil was talking about there is visitor stitching, lends, has everything to do with the accuracy and understanding of conversions, whereas linking, just you know, puts a hole right in the side of your boat and just, just sinks the whole attribution confidence type of an idea. So linking, not the way to go. Um, visitor stitching, absolutely the way to go. And it ties into this principle right here about cross-device uh, cross detail as well. So we're going to highlight yeah, that one. And there's another key point there between st uh, stitching and linking, and especially when you look at this uh, image of this idea of atmospheric marketing, yep. we're engaging with brands in a myriad of ways and Telium really helps to solve for that. Now, in traditional linking paradigms, people are gaining access to information about an individual's engagement with, let's say, a kiosk, a cell phone, a laptop, uh, you name it, offline data. And in traditional linking, the paradigm is actually hampered by the speed at which or the data supply chain and the lack of real-time access to data capturing that data from multiple siloed reporting mechanisms and then making sense of all of that data to be able to unify it and see, oh, wow, this is really one person across different experiences, That's, that takes a lot of time for most people to link together. Through our technology, we're stitching that in real time and speeding up the data supply chain. So a big value proposition that we can partner with you and your customers around when we're talking to, to customers about these cross-device IDs. So our Telium mobile solution is we've, we've got a master mobile library for each of the four primary native platforms, and that's important for, for folks to understand is that uh, we're the only provider out there that's actually addressing all four operating systems. We also have our audience stream library, which allows us to uh, capture data and send it to our audience stream uh, repository to do rich segmentation and also to bi-directionally potentially leverage an integration with, let's say, a push notification vendor uh, or you know, potentially an A-B testing vendor. So that's important as well for people that want to do you know, rich segmentation and bi-directionally send data back into the app for personalization purposes. We're also looking and exploring around the notion of server-to-server -server and the Internet of Things. So the idea that we could send data from one endpoint to um, a reporting mechanism when it comes to smart TVs or kiosks or set-top boxes. And we don't do that today, although we actually had our first integration with an Apple uh, uh, phone, or I'm sorry, watch. But we're exploring it, and that's, I think, what's important. And there's no reason when we look at the Internet of Things that, are fit, that a lot of which are, are, are leveraging mobile standard technology that we wouldn't also look to solve for uh, uh, situations there for our customers in order to get data, be able to unify it, uh, make sense of all of the different touch points that people are engaging with. And so we have some uh, projects under development and, and conversations with customers uh, in the gaming industry, for instance, where we're looking for to solve for those types of things. 
In terms of the, the features themselves, guys, we don't need to, to dive into all of them. I think the, the key takeaway for me uh, always is when I'm talking to customers is the mobile space is convoluted. It is complex, and there's a lot of different requirements out there. So what I want you guys to, to know and, and, and have uh, my word on is that as you bring customers uh, uh, to the table um, and as we work together, we really want to go through a scoping of what's important to them, not just today, but for tomorrow. But what information are they looking to track? What use cases are they solving for? Are they wanting to certify an application today with just the ability to track data to a mobile reporting uh, vendor? Or are they also looking to do things like push notification or A-B testing? Are they thinking ahead and planning for that from a data strategy perspective? These are all questions that we can have. Uh, and solve for, but it usually is a conversation, and customers are all a bit different in terms of where they are with mobile, what they're thinking about, what they should be thinking about. So on some, in some cases, we just want to ask questions and scope appropriately. In other cases, we want to prescribe, and we want to partner with you in order to make sure that we prescribe the right offering. I wanted to provide one use case, uh, one very successful story that we have, and we're still gathering some of the ROI-centric uh, uh, data around this, frankly, assuming American Eagle wants to share it with us, because I think they're so happy with it, they may want to keep it themselves. <laughs> but, you know, they're, they're, they're leveraging our mobile library, plus push notifications and beacon integration. And what that means is, you know, they've got a central anal centralized analytics strategy. They're using us for uh, managing all the vendors that they, that, that they leverage on the traditional web. They're managing us in their app as well so that they can centralize all of those different touch points. And then they have in-store beacons so that if you have the American Eagle uh, app on your phone, you go into a store and communication with that beacon transpires. You get a push notification, which may, may suggest a particular product or might have uh, some sort of incentive or discount that you could leverage right there. And the increased revenue and just overall increase in service orientation is a great way to be a growth marketer. Um, there's lots of great uh, ideas of what a growth marketer is, and um, it's really thinking ahead of where the future is going and taking, taking you know, some risks to, to potentially uh, engage with customers in different ways, and the mobile opportunity really allows for that. So the American Eagle story is one that we'll be tracking and hopefully getting some more uh, revenue-oriented ROI statistics around. Neil, I was reading something in VentureBeat. Mm -hmm. VentureBeat was exactly saying the same thing, right? They're showing that in-store beacons, right, proximity, right? If someone's got their phone on, um, wherever they happen to be in proximity to a beacon, that says, oh, they're looking at this particular offer, they're in this particular area of the store, and that serves up a particular, you know, not necessarily an ad, but could be more information, right? We talked to Lululemon, and they've got this particular rule. If, if you look at a particular item and you hold it for more than six seconds, then someone walks up and gives you a 13 second informational uh, download, but then they walk away, not to pester you. But beacons do the same thing, right? That's a great way to interact at the right time in that magic window of opportunity. So VentureBeat was saying exactly what you're saying here for American Eagle. The, the beacon capability is something that people are cracking into because it's really worth it. Yeah, and it's really big uh, for, for hospitality. If you think about coming into a high regency, for instance, in the moment you walk in the door, yeah. there might be uh, uh, some sort of offer or spa discount or you know free cocktail, welcome uh, message, you name it. If you uh, think about some of the things that the, the Major League Baseball Association is starting to think about doing, again, walk into the venue, some sort of welcome message, maybe discount at one of the booths, for merchandise, uh, just so many different directions that you can get, you could you could go in based on where you are in the venue, not just coming in the venue, but you might have different incentives throughout the venue uh, based on your tickets or your loyalty, how many games you've been to, etc. So great great opportunities, and we're we're having those conversations. Sure is, and then uh, I want to bring Jason up. So hey, Jason, didn't we do some iBeacon stuff <clears throat> at Digital Velocity in April um, when? when we had some people visit partner booths and so forth, how did we leverage? I mean, you were the guy that was in on that iBeacon programming and setting up, isn't that right? What, what did you do? What did we learn from the digital velocity iBeacon detail? So what we did is we used the iBeacons um, and put them in with the sponsor um, uh, booths. 
So the app, when somebody allows the, the app to track them, would basically log when people were at different booths. And if they went to all the booths or certain booths, they would it would go to audience stream and it would trigger a push notification so they could get a prize or get some sort of special notification. Uh, so it made the that part of the conference a little more interactive. We could also use a reporting to help uh, communicate with the vendor sponsors themselves how many VP level contacts went by your booth, how many people overall went by the booth, what was the breakdown, time of day, there's all kinds of things that we can do there as well, which helped our partners get intelligence about what was the efficacy of the overall uh, event for them. That's brilliant. And the pieces that were involved, I mean, they had to download the Telium app. Is that, that the first requirement? Is that right? Yes, that's correct. And then the second was, did they have to turn on Bluetooth, or did was just the app uh, you know, good enough? Uh, they did have to turn Bluetooth on. So okay. uh, most people usually have it on, um, usually not off. So yeah, so yeah, they just download the app, and away they go. They can opt out, of course, um, but usually it's, it's turned on, and they're good to go. Very cool. Um, who went to the bar the most? Yeah. We had a, yeah. <laughs> the bar, so... <laughs> You know, they got the party animal prize. Yeah. Really fun. <laughs> or they might have gotten a push notification saying, you spent two three the hours there. Kit. Here's your hangover <laughs> kit. <Yeah. laughs> well, I also saw, you know, for people that went to the Starbucks location pretty close by, then they also got like a Starbucks gift card, something like that. So that's pretty clever use. Um, yeah, and then, and then so that was that was an audience stream feed, right? So that's the app with Bluetooth interacting with an iBeacon that then fed data straight over through audience stream to to one of our connectors for mobile push notification. Is that the other piece of the puzzle there? That that is correct. Brilliant. Cool. Yeah, I mean, maybe we can go into a separate business about tracking trade shows and so forth. But it seems like there's uh, uh, limited only by imagination how to turn on this beacon capability to apply you know, capabilities for customer focus and partner focus detail. Well, you mentioned VentureBeat earlier. We actually are in discussions with uh, helping them take their, uh, num they have a number of trade shows uh, throughout the country, take, taking those trade shows to the next level with that type of technology. So there could be a business in that for ourselves in the future. Huh. Very smart. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, we've got maybe some Q&A teed up, and other than that, that's what I had, uh, what Jason and I had to, to talk about today, Sean. Yeah, brilliant. Um, okay, so let's let's move over to Q&A. Um, any questions that our partners on the line have, please type those into the Q&A panel, and we'll tackle those. Um, but, you know, as we go through some of the innovative, clever ways of interacting with mobile, interacting with, um, you know, consumer interaction with a brand, you know, they can be, they can be e-commerce, they could be like uh, travel and hospitality like Neil was mentioning. There's just a great number of ways of making sure that we can understand who a person is across their devices. It gives us that full picture, right? Um, engagement, uh, you know, associated with the visitor stitching and so forth. So we know there's a huge market opportunity. We know that, you know, people might not have running water, but they're certainly going to have their mobile phones. It is kind of an ironic way that the world is working these days, but um, I don't see any questions in the panel. We'll give it a last shout out here for any questions. Anybody curious? Anybody want to know more about the mobile detail? Um, you know, as we, have, as we have Neil available for some conversations, if you have meetings having to do with mobile or understanding more about that, you know, Neil um, is, is available to the team, to the partner and channel team, so that way if, if we need to have him in some meetings, that's totally a, an option that's on the table. But I don't see any questions, so okay. that is... Uh, yeah, I just want to echo your sentiment there. Also, if for, for folks uh, that are you know, very technical on the phone, if you want to have a, a follow-up on the architecture, real details of the mobile library, our web view methodology, those types of things, we typically reserve that for a more technical audience, uh, unless you want to see a bunch of code. Um, but, uh, but happy to do so, and it's an important part of the discussion. Depending on where you are in the uh, in the life cycle of a deal or a conversation with a customer, so happy to go there um, at your request. And I got one more thought, one more question. This is going to be directed to Jason. So, so I've been to the Telium Advanced Partner Training in the past, right? For implementation consultants, for certification. 
Um, we have another one of those coming up in uh, September 1st and 2nd in San Diego. And, and Jason, you've been part of that in the past about showing what it looks like to um, integrate Telium into some of the mobile code. Are you going to be in that training for the Advanced Partner training um, coming up September 1 and 2? I am not actually sure. Um, I'll have to talk to education and see if they got me slated for that. Um, yep. yep. Let me know if I, if I am. Fantastic. Yeah, I know that was something valuable that I had as a takeaway when I was there uh, a couple times ago. So, but that's um, that's something that's on the table for. Oh, okay. <laughs> then we will. We will yeah, make that we'll happen. talk to education. And... Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But I want to make sure our partners know that advanced certification and training is taking place September 1st and 2nd in San Diego. Um, it does get into code. It does get into troubleshooting. It does get into some really cool, clever things that um, everybody on the line is invited to. So. So if you have the time um, and the wherewithal, please do join us in San Diego for that advanced partner training. Um, we've ha we have links. Reach out to Nicole Dune or Sean Browning. We can get you the registration detail. But I think that's uh, I think we're lining up towards a wrap here. So um, we have uh, you know number four summer webinar series number four for Telium data access next week, having to do with data data collection, visualizing it inside a Tableau. We'll come up with a Tableau demonstration next week. I think we have uh, Chris Slovak on, on deck for that. So definitely join us next week for our, our next summer webinar series number four. And um, we'll start wrapping it up here. So Jason. Yeah, I, think we've got, I think we've got one question. We actually did have a question come up cool. now, Sean. Um, is, it possible, is it possible to have some sort of auto event listening for mobile? Auto event listening for like UI events? Yes. So we've got uh, a couple different auto tracking elements in the libraries. Um, so, in terms of UI, yeah, we will tr automatically, tra or you have the option of automatically tracking view changes and certain event uh, triggers, so like button taps, slider changes, uh, that, that sort of thing is, can be automatically tracked. Thank you. Yep, yeah, okay. Very cool. Very cool. All right, I think that's a wrap, guys. So. Neil George, Jason Koo, you guys, thank you very, very much for attending and, and lending your brains to our hour of, for partners. And, um, yeah, really, really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. We got it. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, bye-bye. Thanks, all.